I'm here with my December no. You can tell I've been sick because I am so bad at this now. I have like COVID brain without the COVID. Hello everybody, it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my January wrap-up for 2023. I know that I'm a little bit late on the wrap-up, you know it is halfway through February. Have I uploaded a uh, February TBR yet? No. But I got super sick for a bit there and I literally could not talk. I didn't want to get out of bed. I literally took time off of work, which I never do. So that's when you know I'm actually sick. We're finally here. We're gonna get a February TBR uploaded eventually, even though it's pretty much the end of February. It's fine. I read a total of seven books, so without further ado, let's get started. First book that I read is Camilla Knows Best by Farrah Heron. I give this a three out of five stars. This follows a woman named Camilla Hussein who has always been seen as, you know, the party girl. She's very into fashion and she's obsessed with her Instagram famous dog. She loves her job as a little banker. She loves her friends and family. The only thing missing in her life is love. And this is basically the story of her finding love with a very unexpected person. And I'll just leave it at that. So this is actually a retelling of Emma by Jane Austen. It is a very slow burn friends to lovers story. It was set in Toronto, which I went to the University of Toronto, so I lived there for five years, and it's really fun to see places that I've actually been in a story. The book contains so many puppies, which is probably why I rated it so highly. There's even one named Potato, and if that is not the cutest thing you've ever heard, then are you even human? There was so much talk about accounting and I have dyscalculia, which means numbers are very hard for me. So all the talk about accounting, I just could not relate to. I did not care. I just wanted to skip over it. I also felt that the book became very repetitive pretty quickly because a lot of it is either talking about her accounting job or it's talking about these Bollywood parties that Camilla hosts for her friends and family. I do think that Camilla was a very complicated character, but I was not the biggest fan of her, which made it very hard for me to care about what happened to her. I did like Rohan, who is the love interest, a little bit better. I think that their banter was probably the best part of this book, and I did like watching their relationship grow as the story progressed. My favorite part of the story was definitely the supporting characters. I think that they were the most intriguing relationships in the book and I definitely want to see some spin-off stories from the girls in this little group of friends. I thought they were so much fun. So Farah, if you're watching this, give me some side character stories please because I would I would be into that. But overall it was cute for what it was. I give it a three out of five stars. The next book I read was The Murder Roll by Dervla McTiernan and I gave this a 3.5 out of five stars. This follows Hannah who joins the Innocence Project at the University of Virginia. They are about to represent a man they believe to be innocent who is named Michael Dandridge who is on trial for a rape and murder. Hannah really doesn't want this man to be set free and she will stop at nothing to ensure that he remains in jail and it's like the story of that. So this story was interesting. It's told in alternating timelines between the present where Hannah is in this innocence project as well as the past in 1994 through journal entries written by Hannah's mother Laura. The story was a little slow in my opinion, but the concept was interesting enough to make me continue reading. I really wanted to know why Hannah was so hellbent on keeping this man in jail and how she was connected to that story. You definitely need to suspend your believability a little bit in this book because a lot of the things that she does within this innocence project would never happen and she would go to jail real quick. So, you know, it was a little hard to get behind the story, but it was still fun to read. I also was not the biggest fan of Hannah. Just something about her rubbed me the wrong way the entire time, so it was very hard to get behind her mission because I was just like, girl, you're a little bit insane. But it was still fun while I read it, so I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. The next book I read was Stay Awake by Megan Golden, and I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. This follows Liv Reese, who wakes up one night in the back of a taxi, very lost, very confused, with a bloody knife in her pocket. She has strange writing all over her arms and hands telling her to stay awake and while she is watching the news she sees that same message written across a recently murdered man's bedroom window in his own blood. 
As she tries to piece together what happened and how she is connected to this murder, she discovers that a very traumatic event in her past causes her to lose her memory of the last two years every time she falls asleep, and it's the story of that. This is a very fast-paced thriller that I really enjoyed. It is told in dual point of view between Liv as well as Detective Halliday, who is trying to discover who murdered the man in the bedroom. There is also a dual timeline in this where we are following Liv in the present, but we are also taken back two years into her life where we discover what happened to her in that traumatic event that I mentioned earlier. I listened to this on audiobook, which I think definitely boosted my enjoyment of this. The narrator did such an incredible job of really showcasing the character's fear and confusion in her voice. I'm also just a huge sucker for an unreliable narrator, so I was so invested in Liv and her story. I think that the author did a really great job with pacing as well. It was very fast paced and I never really felt bored while reading it. I do think that it is a very predictable story and you are able to call who the killer is from a mile away if you're paying attention, but that didn't falter my enjoyment whatsoever and I ended up really liking it so I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. The next book that I read um, is probably one of the most fucked up weird books I've ever feasted my eyeballs on. Um, it's R.I.P. by Charity B. I ended up giving it a 4 out of 5 stars because I was just so invested in this story. Like, it is fucking weird, but essentially it follows Malachi and his little sister. Adriel, who are both raised in a very religious household. They have been told their entire lives that they must obey their mother and father. They appear to be a pretty normal family, but behind closed doors they are hiding some very, very dark secrets. I don't really want to go more into detail of those secrets because that kind of gives the whole book away, and honestly I think that this book was solely written for shock factor. I don't even know how to feel about this book after reading it. I went into it completely blind because a lot of people were telling me that I should read it. So I was like, okay, cool. Like, sounds like a good time. Like, I like the cover. It looks intriguing. And then I read it. And I am both very disturbed and intrigued by this story. Like, I had to put it down multiple times while reading it because of the ick factor of it. The family is so fucked up but you couldn't stop reading because you wanted to see what fucked up thing they were going to do next, which is like a weird thing to think about now after you've read the book. <laughs> there are multiple point of views in this that are spanning over several years, both in the past and the present, which definitely kept the story interesting. There are a lot of trigger warnings for this book, so pretty much any trigger you could think of is going to show up in this book, so definitely be aware before you go into it that it is a very dark book. There's also a lot of gory, gory, gory scenes, um, so if that's not exactly your thing, probably avoid this, but I'm, I'm not gonna lie, like, I, I actually enjoyed this book. The characters were extremely unpredictable, and like I said, I couldn't stop reading because I just wanted to see what they were going to do next, so I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars, but definitely, you know, look up the trigger warnings before you decide to pick it up. Next up I have Camp Spirit by Axel something. I honestly can't remember their name, but um, I gave this a 1.5 out of 5 stars. It's a graphic novel. I had it on my net galley shelf for years and years and years. It wouldn't open on my computer for the longest time and then I got Kindle Unlimited and it was on there so I was like, hey, might as well get this off the net galley TBR. So I read it and clearly I didn't like it very much because I gave it a 1.5 out of 5 stars. But this takes place in 1994 where a girl named Elodie is about to head off to college, but first her mom signs her up to be a camp counselor during the summer. Upon arriving, she is given a rambunctious group of redheads who are very excited to make her have the most memorable summer that she can have. But as she settles in, she quickly realizes that the camp is hiding some very dark secrets and it kind of progresses from there. Like I said, I was not the biggest fan of this. I did really like the art style and the bright colors. I loved the group of little redhead minions. <laughs> they definitely got up to a lot of antics. But there was so much homophobia in this book that was never really discussed. 
I also just found that the book was very unresolved in the end. Like I was flipping the pages trying to see where the rest of the story was and there is no second book in the series. Like it is a completely standalone story so I was very unsatisfied in the end. So yeah, gave it a 1.5 out of 5 stars. Was not for me but pretty art. The next book that I have is His Holiday Pact by Ayla Asher and I gave this a 2.5 out of 5 stars. This follows Kayla Summers and her hot neighbor Carter who decide to make a pact where they are going to be in a fake relationship during the holidays to appease their parents. But as they spend more time together they realize that they have an undeniable chemistry and things progress. This was fine. Like it wasn't bad but it wasn't good. It became very repetitive very quickly and at the end I really didn't care if Kayla and Carter ended up together. I do think that they had very good chemistry together and I do think that they were good together but it drove me insane how indecisive Carter was towards Kayla and how Kayla just kind of let him string her along for the majority of the story. I also just found it exhausting how often Kayla was putting herself down because of her appearance or her personality or whatever it was and I understood that it was because her mother was a terrible human and just kept putting her down. But how many times do you have to be told that you are hot or sexy or whatever to believe the 600 people who are telling you it throughout the book, you know? The cover of this book also infuriates me a little bit because there's so much talk about how Kayla has curves and you know she's a big bodacious woman but th this cover, this this model, she's like rail thin so where are the curves cover designer? Where? Where are they? I also found some of the dialogue in this to be very cringy like people do not talk to each other the way that they were talking to each other and I just like wanted to skim all of those parts but I will say that the steamy scenes were pretty well written but they didn't come until well over halfway through the book so that was a little disappointing but definitely saved it for me which is why it did get a 2.5 instead of a lower rating so take that as you will. And then the final book that I have for my January 2023 wrap up is Strike the Zither. This is by Joan Hay and I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. So this takes place in a war stricken land where three warlordesses are fighting for control over the continent. Zephyr is the strategist for Zinren, who is the weakest of the three warlordesses. She has no land to her name whatsoever. So when Zephyr realizes that Ren is in danger, she decides to infiltrate the enemy and take down their camp from within. I thought that this was an okay read except a lot of the time I was bored which was really weird for a book that was so packed with action. This is a retelling of The Three Kingdoms which I'm not familiar with so maybe that's why I didn't enjoy it as much as other people. I didn't care for the majority of the characters. They all felt way too similar to me. The only four characters that were truly distinguishable to me were Zephyr, Crow, Miasma, and Ren which are like the four main characters so that makes sense but you know a ratio of four to the like 20 characters that there were only being memorable is not exactly good you know? I also just found some of the characters actions to be a little bit confusing especially when it was characters telling certain characters things and they just believed them like right off the bat I'm looking at you Miasma if you've read the book you probably know what I'm talking about like it just didn't make sense in like a war stricken land situation. I just feel like you would be a little bit more skeptical as a warlordess of a strategist coming into your camp and being like I serve you now like I don't know. I just think I would be a little bit more hesitant inviting them into my camp but you know that might just be me. I did love how pretty much every single character in power was a female so we love to see that. I also really loved the plot twist that everybody seems to hate. I don't know I just didn't see it coming so I was very intrigued to see where the story was going to progress from there but yeah ended up giving it a 3 out of 5 stars it was what it was but I wasn't like overly blown away by the story. Alright everybody so those were the seven books that I read for the month of January 2023. I will have a February TBR up eventually even though you know it's very very much into February it's fine. But let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them. And I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!